The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, Kenai Peninsula, Alaska, on your new fire apparatus, job number 30541. Please utilize this job number when referencing your new apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment. Let's get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Starting down at the base of the front bumper, you'll find a right and left dual air horns. Moving just inward of that location on the passenger side, you'll find an electronic siren. Moving up onto the bumper, you'll find your mechanical siren on the driver's side. Up onto the body, you'll find a right and left turn indicator. Moving up onto the side of the body, you'll find a warning light. And just inside of that, you'll find your headlight cluster with the high beam lights on the inside and the low beam on the exterior. Just up from that, you'll find warning lights. As we move to the center, just above the Pierce logo, or I should say under the Pierce logo, you'll find a latch to open the hood. As we move up onto the top of the windshield, you'll find three windshield wipers across the seamless front windshield. And all the way up on the very top of the brow, you'll find a shelf which houses an LED forward facing light in addition with your running lights. Located up on the top, you have a split light bar. Let's move back down to the bumper area. Just underneath, you'll find at the very base two attachment points, forward-facing hooks, in addition to the location of your front bumper drain. Moving up onto the top, once again, you'll find on that tray the LED lights in addition with your running lights. Generalized view here of your entire light bar. As we move up to the tip of the ladder, you'll find on the passenger side this latch. This is the latch to detach the waterway and pin it to a lower position on your ladder. Just up from that location, you'll find two LED lights. You'll also find a scabbard for your chainsaw. You'll also find at the lower portion your master stream fog nozzle. You'll also find controls and also a speaker located at the very top. Generalized view here of that front section of your apparatus, including the headlights and emergency warning lights. And you can see we didn't mention earlier, but there also is a side marker light. Close up here of the air horn and the uh, mechanical siren on the driver's side. As we look to the opposite side, you'll find your electronic siren and an additional air horn. Let's look now facing down at the uh, section here of the front bumper. This is going to be the location of your storage for your front bumper load. Here is your one-piece mirrors. As you can see here, there is a flat portion and a convex portion at the very top. Moving back down to the bumper, you'll find a side-facing warning light. And as we look under this section also, you'll find perimeter lighting. As we look underneath, this is the discharge location for your front bumper load. Generalized view here of the side of the apparatus, we can see starting at the very front, mechanical siren. Moving down from that location, you'll find that warning light that we saw earlier. As we move further back into the wells where the steps are located, you'll find step lights. And then just underneath the diamond plate step, you'll also find perimeter lighting. Let's move back up onto the top of the body. You'll find dual uh, entry points here for the front and rear door. There are grab handles located here. As we move to the rear section here, you'll find a rear-facing side camera. Also in that general vicinity, this is going to be your shore power, which is an auto eject plug. Moving further up to the very top of the apparatus, you'll find a side facing floodlight. And toward the very back, you'll find an indicator here for your tank level. Down, also down in the lower left hand corner here of your front step, you'll find your air inlet. Close up here of the bullet camera in addition with the uh, shore power plug and indicator. Moving up, you'll find the side facing flood. As we move further to the back of the apparatus, you'll find once again your tank indicator for visual notification of the amount of water. 
Also located on the very rear section, a side facing emergency warning light. Let's go ahead and move to the pump panel area. First, you'll find two two and a half discharges. Located also in this area is a warning sticker regarding pressurized caps and hazards associated with that. You'll also find in the center your large diameter pump intake. Just down from that, you'll find this override, which is requiring a tool to override the valve. Down at the very bottom section, these are the associated drains, which are color coded and labeled, and also your two and a half inch auxiliary inlet. Located down at the very base, you'll find a fully enclosed pump panel enclosure. These are the two levers and also a handle to pull and open that location. As we look just uh, to the rear section here, you'll find this long compartment door. Once accessed, you'll find additional storage in this area. To the right hand side of that, you'll find the netting area. Up in the top, you'll find pike pole locations or long tool storage in addition with a dead lay. Moving down from that location in the general vicinity of the same of that netting, you'll find the two and a half inch cross lay, your number one cross lay, and then you can see on the other side an additional cross lay. Uh, notice that these are all cross lays that have the ability for that center section or speed lay to be removed for the hose to be loaded and restored back in its position. Let's look underneath. You'll find once again a fully enclosed pump panel, perimeter lighting, and also a pull out step. General view here of your pump panel. Let's talk about some of the components in the next set of images here. Starting in the upper left hand corner, this is going to be your water tank indicator. This is a Tank Pro. Moving to the right hand side, you'll find your master intake gauge. In between the master intake and the discharge gauge, you'll find two ports. These are your test ports for vacuum and pressure. They are currently plugged. In the upper right hand corner, find your master discharge gauge. And in the very upper right hand corner, you'll find a yellow indicator regarding your PCM fault. Just down from that, you'll find an audible speaker in the black. And as you move further down, you'll find another amber indicator for pump overheat. Let's move down to the pump panel and talk about some of the discharge ports. Starting in the upper left hand corner, you'll find your front discharge. Moving to the right, you'll find your two and a half inch cross lay, which we talked about earlier. Moving cross, you'll find in yellow, this is the number one cross lay. And then just to the right, you'll find your two and a half inch cross lay. Moving to the right, this is the component for your pump gauge heater. And moving to the right, you'll find your fire pump primer. Just beneath that, you'll find an indication or instructions here for RPMs associated with using that fire pump primer. To the right, you'll find your water tank indicator and also throttle and pressure control module. Looking on the left, you'll find your driver side flood, passenger side flood, an air horn in red, pump compartment heater, ladder illumination, and diesel heater enabled. Let's go ahead and cover some of the components in the lower section of the pump panel. As we move to the next set of images here in the upper corner here, you'll find in the black label, Pierce, this is your maintenance schedule for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. Beneath that, you'll find a warning label regarding the use of your owner's manual. In the upper right hand, in the pink area, you're going to find your aerial device master stream control. Moving to the left, you'll find the tank fill and recirculating. And to the right of that, your tank to pump. As we look through the rest, these are all going to be your Acron electronic valves. Uh, there is significant information here in your owner's manual regarding the control of those. Located in the sensor is your primer drain. This is a twist, not a pull. We'll talk about the access door here to the right here in the next set of images. First, let's go ahead and move uh, to the left hand side. There is a placard here regarding danger and associated hazard with riding on the side of the apparatus or on the vehicle. Just beneath that, you'll find all of your drains for your discharges. They are clearly marked and also color coded. Let's talk about that access door now. As you see here, this is a foam location for fill and operation. In the horizontal position, it is for operation. Move that for the fill position to the vertical position. Also to the right hand side, red covered switch plate and a amber warning light. 
This is your pump shift override. Let's go ahead and take a look at the general side of your apparatus down at the very base underneath the apparatus stabilizer pads. Just uh, to the rear of the stabilizer pads is the actual stabilizer. Let's move all the way to the very top. You'll find a side facing floodlight. And as we move just to the rear of the rear tire, you'll find two locations for your folding wheel chocks. Generalized view here into the compartment. You have three fixed adjustable shelves. Moving uh, just to this section here, this is going to be the stabilizer which uh, retracts and there is the hazard of crush. There is also the hazard for electrical, so there are some danger and warning labels here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, this blue cap is your DEF fill, 4.5 US gallons. You also have bottle storage in these access doors, both in front and to the rear of the wheel. Just below that bottle storage, you'll find an additional access door. This is gonna be the fill location for your ultra low sulfur diesel fuel. Moving back up to the top, here's an image of that uh, side facing floodlight. And let's talk about the compartment just underneath that roll up compartment door here. This long compartment door houses a shelf with inside it. It is adjustable, currently in a fixed position. Let's move back underneath the apparatus close up here of those folding chocks and the uh, mechanism to release. And as we look to the very rear section here, you'll find an access door in addition with a uh, ladder to gain access to your aero device. As we look in this compartment, you'll find two adjustable shelves and at the very bottom, a pullout style shelf. General view here of the side of your apparatus. We'll go ahead and cover some of the components in the rear of your apparatus. As we look to the left, this is your stabilizer pad illumination light and also a switch for your deck lights. Just beneath that is your brake turn hazard uh, light assembly. In this access door, this is the driver side stabilizer and rear stabilizer control. Just up from that location, you'll find an additional access door. This is the storage location for ground ladders. Uh, you have additional ground ladders and also long pole storage in this access door. Located in the center where your logo is located, you'll find an additional access storage location. This roll-up door inside, you'll find an adjustable shelf here, currently in a fixed position. As we move to the uh, right uh, side of your apparatus and just down at the very base, you'll find additional uh, access door just beneath the roll-up door. Let's talk a little bit about some of the components here. These are all the associated valves uh, regarding overrides. There are significant danger and warning labels and instructions on uh, utilizing these. Please refer to your owner's manual. On the right hand side, you'll find additional lateral storage location here. As we access this door, you'll find two ladders in this location, both extension ladders. Moving down to the right hand side, you're going to find your at the base, backup, turn, brake, and also emergency light. You'll also find your passenger side stabilizer control and also rear stabler control. Generalized view here of the side of your apparatus. One of the things we didn't discuss is in the apparatus you have two attachment points to the rear and also your large diameter intake. As we open this compartment you'll find similar to the other side two adjustable shelves and also a roll out shelf on the bottom. On this side near the rear wheel you'll find the same configuration as the opposite side. Dual bottle storage locations in the front of the wheel and also dual bottle storage locations to the rear of the wheel. Let's go ahead and move up to the uh, long compartment over the rear wheel. Behind this roll up door you'll find a toolbar. Uh, this is an access uh, that opens and pulls outward. It is adjustable front to rear. There is the ability for tool storage on both the front and the rear side of this uh, device. As we move uh, to the front, you'll find, as you do on the opposite side, side-facing floodlight. Just underneath the apparatus, you can see a small glimpse of your uh, tire chains. Just to the front of that, you'll find your side stabilizer. And just in front of that, you'll find an additional warning label here regarding diesel exhaust and the hazards associated with a hot exhaust. Moving up from that, you'll also find additional warning and danger labels regarding crush and electrical shock. 
Let's go ahead and take a look inside some of the compartments here as we move forward. In this compartment, very bottom, you'll find that pull-out shelf. At the very top, two adjustable shelves here currently in the fixed position. As we move even further forward, we'll take a look what's inside these compartments. You'll find an additional set of shelving here, three adjustable shelves that are currently in the fixed position. As we move forward to that location, we'll talk a little bit about the netting, which is exactly the same as the opposite side for access for hose and also tools. Let's go ahead and take a look now at the pump panel area. On the left-hand side, you'll find behind the eagle, you're going to find your large diameter intake. Moving over, you'll find additional warning label here regarding pressurized caps. Moving further down, you'll find your 2.5 inch auxiliary inlet. Moving to the right, you'll find all of your overrides located in this area, which require the tool. You'll also find a 2.5 inch discharge and also your large diameter discharge. Generalized view here of the side of the apparatus. We just talked about some of those components. Most of the components are mirrored from the opposite side. Once again, you have your tank level indicator currently indicating in red, which would be empty. Your side facing scene lights, grab handles and key door locks in addition with your bullet style side facing camera. General view here of the entire side of your apparatus. Let's now start in the driver's side operators area. On all access points for personnel you'll find additional warning labels here for the use of seat belts. Down at the very bottom you'll find additional information regarding exhaust and cancer and also you'll find this yellow placard here which we'll discuss in the next set of images. Moving up onto the left hand side you'll find your diagnostic ports and also tech module and also you'll find all of your switches for regen. Let's take a look now at that uh, yellow label here from Pierce Manufacturing. Uh, this label here offers a tremendous amount of information regarding your apparatus. It has the date of manufacture, job number, VIN number. It also has tire information, inflation information, gross vehicle weight ratings, and also all of your fluids and capacities and types for your apparatus. Let's start back up on the uh, left hand side of your apparatus the large red quarter turn battery switch. This is your master battery switch. As we move up from that location, you'll find at the top hazard, your start and your ignition switch. To the right hand side, you'll find an emergency master switch labeled EM. You'll also find your headlights and running lights and also the panel dim switch uh, or brighten for the panels. Located in the center of your dash, you'll find a cluster here. It offers uh, significant information for transmission, oil, DEF, water, your RPMs or tachometer, miles per hour. It also has volts, fuel, front air and rear air. It also has some displays at the very top, midsection and lower section regarding check engine information. Let's go ahead and move to the right hand side of that. You'll find your system parking brake, pull to apply, push to release. As we move further to the right, general view here of all of the components on the uh, disposal of the uh, operator. First, let's start in the uh, left-hand corner here with your Allison transmission pad. We'll start also with your aerial master, aerial PTO, an indicator for your aerial PTO engaged, and also your stabilizer pad lights. Some future switches below that. At the very bottom, you have an engine brake on-off switch, the setting for low, medium, or high, a differential lock, your off-road traction device, mirror heat, and tire chains on the right-hand side, which has a do not remove label. We'll now move just to the right of this location, talk about some of the components here. Moving to the right, you'll find at the very top it says E1. Uh, that is going to be your uh, pump pressure. Just beneath that, you'll find your water pump and also the stationary OK to pump while rolling. At the very top, you'll find your flat and convex mirror controls for your exterior mirrors. Also located in the center, you'll find your climate control. 
Looking overhead of the operator, we'll talk about some of these components and we'll break those down now. Let's first start with the yellow label on the left. This is your height, length, gross vehicle, weight rating of your vehicle coming from the manufacturer, emergency master, roof light, your front warning, side warning, upper rear warning, upper rear warning, high beam flash, and opticom. Also the lower rear warning, which I think I may have missed. Moving to the right of that of the operator overhead, you'll find another set of switches. This is going to be two future locations for uh, access modules. Uh, your moose light, also your perimeter lights, front flood, driver side flood, passenger side flood, and your rear flood. Moving further to the right, once again, over the operator's head, you'll find your controls for your air horn, mechanical siren, a siren brake for your mechanical siren, load master, and just beneath that you have four future locations. And then just beneath that at the very bottom, difficult to see, this is going to be your Firecom wireless system. Moving further to the right, located in the center, you'll find your traffic advisor to the rear, on off, and all of the settings associated with it, flash, split, left and right. To the right of that, you'll find your siren control, and in the very center, a red puck style light. This is the compartment door ajar, located here. Generalized view here of the rear section. You can see there's some push on, push off red and white lights, in addition with audio speakers. There are some SCBA mounts located on the passenger side and on the driver side. You also have rear facing SCBA mounted seats. Located between those SCBA seats, you'll find this access door at about foot level. Behind the access door, you'll find your engine oil and your transmission. These are for your daily checks. Just up from that location, you'll find a 12 volt USB style access. In the center area, you'll find an additional 12 volt access point. Looking overhead, these are going to be your Firecom headset systems. This is going to be on the passenger side. This is a rear facing SCBA seats. Notice the red seat belts for easy identifying if your individuals have your seat belts on. In the rear, you'll find additional storage. In that storage location, you'll find a shore outlet, 20 amp. Also located in this are your electric window controls, door latches, and also the red handle here to help assist you in and out of the cab. You'll also find warning labels regarding the use of seat belts. As we move to the center of the passenger side here, you can see your access door on the right hand side for components and also a dash. Glove box, located overhead, once again push on, push off, red and white lights. Located in the center, you'll find your air horn, the mechanical siren, and then you also have a siren brake. Also located up onto the uh, center area, you'll find once again 12 volt access. This is the barrel style. The one just beneath that is going to be more of the USB style. And also just above that, you'll find your vehicle data recorder. Overhead of the passenger, you'll find your Firecom system. Moving just to the left of that location, you'll find a stereo system. Congratulations on your new apparatus, job number 30541. If you have any questions as to the content or any further discussion that may be needed, please contact your Hughes Fire sales associate. Thank you and congratulations.